on the screen. Uh, one of our guests was unable to make it. Now going to a conversation where we have Trisha Twasima. She is a feminist and yesterday, in regards to what we put out, which was what the minister said about tourism and how we're going to add women to the, let me not even say women, Kavi women to the tourism attraction list of Uganda. She just simply said, this is so tiring. Now, Trisha is one of a number of feminists who say things on Twitter, but in this case, she was left silent. Now, Trisha Twasima is our feminist and will be joining us on this conversation this morning, which is in regards to what our Honorable our Minister of Tourism said. Mala? Yes, yes, yes. And Trisha, we are having quite a lot of, you know, kind of comments coming through. And it was just not from you. And of course, before we went on a break, we did sample some of them. And people were asking, so what's the plan? As much as they said that, you know what, we're going to have a pageant and then maybe choose the most curvaceous women, so to speak. So guys were asking, What's the plan? When tourists come, actually they go to maybe museums where they see all these artifacts showcased. So what's the plan with the Ukavishas women? I don't know, maybe your take on this. Why were you so um, disappointed with this particular move? I mean, I think that it's important to remember that this is the same country that punishes women for being, quote-unquote, too sexual, right? We have the anti-miniskirt law. What's that supposed to do? The anti-pornography law, but really just, you know, the miniskirt law, which basically curtails how women dress, mm -hmm. right? We have the porn committee right now looking for revenge victims, mm -hmm. revenge victims of porn being the ones that they are harassing. And this is the same country that now comes to say that women are somewhat of a tourist attraction. So the objectification of women when and how it suits the country is really what's perturbing many of us, right? And so my question is, so when these tourists come to see, quote unquote, the curvy women, do they come and enter a room and it's a display? <laughs> like, what's the purpose, right? This is the same country that's very anti-sex work. So I'm even understanding what the purpose of this campaign is and where it's supposed to end. Right. Yeah. So from yesterday, as we start and finish this conversation at some point, which I don't think we can f clearly and fully get down to the bottom of it, we did have the Ministry of Tourism adding Kavi and sexy Ugandan women to the list of tourism products to attract tourists. To take a look at some of these pictures, we had ladies being a part of this. For a number of people who saw it on social media, have gone to YouTube, you have seen that there are ladies who are actually standing side by side with the minister and they were saying, yes, we will be there for this contest. And a number of people are saying, how is this even possible? Those are the women. I mean, so where do we put the women, Trisha? Because there are women like you and I and Mala, I'm not sure where you stand with this one, but a number of women out there who feel how can this be happening but then we also have these women who are willing to be a part of this contest I mean, you must understand why, you know, women are willing to be a part of things like this. I mean, I think for me, the idea of beauty pageants as a whole is a tad problematic. But when you look at the reasons why women continuously participate in, 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 in occasions like this, mm -hmm. I mean, one, the financial gain, right? I mean, this economy <laughs> wants to not a free job, right? And so when you take people's needs, needs for, it, it may be for money, for popularity, for fame, for whatever, and use that to continuously objectify women, that's a problem. My problem is even the comments that he made, right? Mm. For you to actually say named new tourist attraction, I think that that just, that should, but this shouldn't be surprise us, right? Because we have had ministers in this country who have done a lot worse and they've gotten away with it, right? Do you remember the Onesma's Tunamasiko situation? Yes. Do you remember the Chibula situation? Mm -hmm. So it's just a pattern of these men saying extremely harmful things about women and not being held accountable. And I think that it has to stop somewhere. So what do we do with this pattern? How do we stop this pattern? Because there are a number of women who are saying no. There are women who are making headway in terms of their careers. There are women who are trying to do the most that they can and try to stop this whole bit of being sexualized that maybe even if I wear a dress that's tight I just like the dress I don't actually want to show off my body in a sexual way yeah. yes 
So how do we break this pattern? What needs to change? I mean, this is the interesting part, Rita, because one, you had um, the government put out new policies a bit a year or so ago that were saying that women cannot wear clothes that show their bodies or that reach a certain... So you have that, right? And now, when they're trying to make money off women, they're now saying, well, you know, we're going to attract tourists by showing off your curves. So in terms of where does it stop, I think that we need to see just men being better, right? And we must continuously call out these sexist things that they do. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that we cannot get tired. We must continuously push them to be better. There's already a petition online that's just circulating that's just saying that this is unnecessary. This is not what we stand for as a country. And I think just the continuous pressure from every single person, from the media. I mean, I look at some of the ways the media reports on some stories and mm -hmm. I'm just like, this is not, you know, just make it a point that people understand that this is wrong. And I think that then we'll begin to see maybe some headway. But let me ask you a question, because then people are saying, and we've seen people having different views, them who are pro it, them who are against it. And so my question to you would be, how can we fight this or how can we win this? Because we have people who also promote this or support this. And I'll just sample some of your views on social media. And this is actually coming from a man, Johnson Arinaitwe. He's saying, I actually don't find a problem with it. Why must the Miss Contestants be slim? Let the biggie also have their time. No problem at all. <laughs> oh, I, don't so think, I, I mean, I don't think that the question is the standards of the of you know how the women are looking in the beauty contest i mean i think that if you for example we have miss uganda already right mm -hmm. so are you saying that only slim women are allowed to participate in miss uganda yeah that's those, his view. those are the rules that's right? his view i think that for me when we look at just how beauty pageants began and just what they were about and what they promote, you realize that there is a problem generally with beauty pageants, right? But I think for me, the major problem is for a minister to say that these are now tourist attractions, that you're purposing to display women as objects tourist attraction that's the problem right and I think for me it doesn't matter how much we try to excuse it or you know just make it appear different it's not right, right? the fact of the matter is they are objectifying women right they are displaying women or purposing to display women for as a commodity this is the same country that we have seen punish women for being sexual so that just hypocrisy and double standard just needs to end if Let's now flip the coin and just assume that maybe he's given a second chance and and, and, and and we're in this scenario where we really have to show that you know Uganda is blessed by very beautiful women. But why how do best, we have to show that? How best uh, let's just assume maybe you get to support this in some way mm -hmm. or you're brought to you're brought to the board that actually mm -hmm. strategizes on this particular plan. Mm -hmm. How best would it have been executed? Because one thing that you've actually mentioned is even the name you know, saying that, that women are now becoming a tourist attraction. How best would he have handled it, maybe? I mean, I don't think there was any way to handle it. I think that the right thing to do in all situations like this is just to not objectify women, okay. right? Because when you, the moment you begin to display women, for whatever favors, for whatever, it, it just ceases to just have any real meaning for mm. me. But when we talk about objectifying women, there's the side to the women that we call the slay queens. Mm -hmm. The ones who are on social media, because we do know that a number of them have actually joined the tourism bit of things. Mm. And yesterday, some of them expressed their sadness as to how, why they were not going to be a part of the contest, because they're in their, the hashtag to Lamble Eastern has been trending. So we have women who are willing and flaunting and objectifying themselves day in day out then we have the women who are saying no this is not right so we have two sides of it can we say that maybe the men are also confused <laughs> because no, let's let's think of it are the men confused by the signals that are being sent out by the different women no I don't think there's such a thing as men being confused by this I think that for me my, 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 my point is to begin to look at the root cause of the problem so even when we talk about like quote-unquote slay queens mm -hmm. What does that mean, right? Are you talking about women who like to look good, women who like to wear makeup, women who like to take pictures? Is that a bad thing, right? My, the, it, it turns into a negative connotation when then we are placing their value based off that, 
right? If you say that a woman looks good and takes pictures and therefore somehow that demeans her or that up one ups her over another woman, then it becomes a problem, right? But there's women who like to look good. There's no problem with that. I don't see why then we must label them and make it a negative thing that I like to take pictures. I like to look a certain type of way. Mm. Why is that a bad thing? And then if I like to maybe, I don't want to say use my body, but for a number of people that are using social media as a way mm -hmm. to maybe use their pages to promote them and also get them some money, mm. best on being these influencers mm. that we have now. So I will go to places, take a picture, and maybe I'm half naked or maybe I'm not entirely dressed those kinds of women they're using what they have which mm -hmm. is their smartphones and their bodies mm -hmm. yes yeah wearing the right things mm -hmm. one would say Perhaps that's the tourism that they're talking about there. Mm. But Rita, we do that in advertising. I mean, when you look at what advertising does, really, is to just display women as commodities for gain, right? So for me, my thing is that we need to just end... And not because of just ending it for the sake of ending it, because we see it has harmful results, mm -hmm. right, towards women. Like, you can't even walk down the street without someone thinking that it can touch a certain type of way. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is the image that we are selling, the idea that we are selling, and we have normalized it so much. So to begin to actually fix that problem, you need to go back to what caused this, what continuously um, perpetuates it, what are the stereotypes that are encouraging this, and then fix that from there. But I don't think that you can say women are to blame, because this is, for many of them, this is what they have been told, right? If you want to be successful, you must dress like this, you must act like this. So to begin to, re to rectify that problem, I think it, it's not a surface problem. You just need to just go to the deep root of the thing and just begin to uproot. How long do we need to uproot for? Because I feel like this has <sighs> been a, a work coming over and over and over. Because mm -hmm. there was a time, a lady, in some places, a woman couldn't actually work and go to work. Mm -hmm. Now women are working, and now they're actually earning their money. And now the issue is we have the Agency. bodies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, We have I think the that bodies. That and I the fashion is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's... Every single generation and every single movement and every single wave has its different intentions. And I think that we have definitely made headway. And I think that we will continuously, because this is a system that has been in place for so many years. So to think that it can just go away just because you just wish it, it's not possible, right? And there's always people who are pushing us back, like ministers like this who say things like this, right? Mm. So I think that it's going to be a continuous process, obviously. But I think that we're definitely seeing headway. Even five years ago, many people would not have seen this as a problem, right? Yeah. But now people realize, okay, this is wrong. And I think that the more we continue to talk about it and push for change, we'll actually see some good results. We have a group of women activists who have actually have intention to move to court to actually sue this particular move. But will this hold water, especially when we are having a majority who are coming out to say, and I'll sample one view here. Mm -hmm. um, we have Mr. Gart Kabuo. He's saying, who will really get hurt by this contest? To me, nobody. If you don't like it, just ignore it. Otherwise, there are worse things that are happening that are worth protesting attention seekers just and of course this is um, a, a comment based on that particular mm -hmm. group of women who want to move to court to actually challenge this particular um, kind of idea from the minister so will this hold water really if we have two sides of the divide who have equally you know weighty comments with regards to the same conversation I definitely think that it's going to hold water I think for me to say that this hurts nobody is to really miss the point right Behaviors like this, actions like this, have a trickle down effect, right? So when you normalize the objectification of women, that comes with so much, right? It comes with the inability to walk down the street, it comes with harmful stereotypes, it comes with just all sorts of violent actions, right? So for me, the issue is not, it's not just a context, a contest, it's not, right? It has trickle down effects. And I think that people need to begin to realize that the way we portray me women in the media, the way we portray women on these shows, the way we portray women, you know, in how we talk about them, in how we think about them, right. that actually affects how they are how the society sees them, how much they can achieve. What, so it, it's, it's not just, oh, this is just a contest. No, it has actual harmful results. And women, we are here saying that it has actual harmful results, and we don't stand with it. So the women have spoken out, and it has been, some are saying, okay, this is happening. Some are saying, I don't even, I'm lost for words. Yeah. Let's talk about the gentlemen in regards to this conversation. I know you have been following <laughs> the conversation on Twitter, on Facebook. Yeah. The men are aware of this. Some are laughing about it. 
But let's talk about the men who are actually saying this is wrong. Mm. Have you seen these men? Yeah. And what are. does that say about our society in regards to our headway? I mean, I think it says that there's right thinking people in society, right? Reasonable people. Because I think that any, any reasonable person, regardless of gender, should be able to say this thing is wrong, right? And I think that, I mean, I don't think anybody deserves to get a pat on the back for doing the right thing. Mm. Because it is the right thing to do. So we right? shouldn't be saying well done to the men that are actually joining the Just movement. Just say well done saying... to the people, right? Because, mm. uh, because, I mean, there's still many people, women, men, and other genders who are saying this is fine, right? And there's others who are saying this is problematic because of A, B, and C. So I think for me to focus on on just, oh, there's some men who are supporting this and some men who are not, it's really just to lose focus on what it is we're fighting. Mm. Right now we're saying that everybody who is sensible, who is reasonable, needs to understand that this is not the right thing to do, right? Now, those who fall outside that bucket, we will hope and pray that, <laughs> but you know, for the most part, right. I don't think anybody deserves a pat on the back for mm. just doing the right thing. Okay, mm. interesting. So many are actually calling for the resignation of the minister. What's your take? Listen, I think that a lot of people need to have resigned by now. <laughs> but <laughs> as, I mean, we've been calling ever since. Ever mm. since um, Onesmas and Chibuli, mm. we've been calling for resignations. As to how far that goes, I mean, I don't know. We're going to take in a call. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Who are we speaking to? Robert. Yes, Robert. What is your comment this morning? I think uh, in my family, you know, they all you know. Pardon? They all need to be lost in Nigeria. <laughs> because honestly, how do they feel to parent their mother or their own sister or their own daughter? It's because for me, at the end of the day, tourism attraction leads to something that happens. A community must learn from. What we need to learn from our parents' daughter? our cousin's mother and our cousin's sister. Honestly, it leads to morality. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the inner context of a man looking at a woman drives a lot of confusion in the head of this man. Let us be quite honest about our moral values we are attached mm -hmm. to many of the things we do. Because me, this is an outright argument. It is, it, it is a great human right act to our sister, to our mother, mm. and to our daughter. Right. If, if, if really the head of state is interested in this and thinking this is the best way we are going to sell our country, I think we have lost the all. Honestly, you know, it is good deep inside me. I am lost of what till yesterday when I read about this. I keep in question myself. Let's look at how beautiful our national culture is. Let's look at the beautiful country how the beautiful scenery how. You know, the, 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 the highest level of environmental abuse in this country is really protected. This is where the deeds of the matter of climate attraction all be Right, right. Thank you so much, Robert, for your views. Thank you so much for calling us this morning. Of course, your views have been noted. Yes, they have. I'm sure you're like clapping right now. Yeah, I'm really sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he also brings in the fact that there's your mother, there's your sister, there's your daughter. Uh, we're going to take in another call. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Who are we speaking to and where are you calling from? This is Richard. Yeah. Yes, Richard. Richard, Okay, Richard, what is your comment this morning? It's, uh, it's a very negative one. I just want to, let, let's just think about tourism itself. I don't think tourism is just for the outsiders, it's for everybody, even the locals, right? Right. So, for example, you the Rolex. If you go and you maybe a tourist will come and eat the Rolex and it's nice, it's not a lot of them they have to buy and eat for buy it to be right? Mm -hmm. And probably carry me and whatever. What happens after these people have cars and they live without sisters, mothers, and everybody else? You know? What are they going to do with the women? So, I think this thing is promoting immorality, 
and the high level of normalizing women and you know it, it's a shame for the minute to such a thing. Because we need to be on just look six up have appreciated the what's look at the next. Thank you so much, Richard, for your views. Thank you so much. Ah, Rita, and, and, and you know, the thing that many were actually angry with is that we're coming from a point, and I think Rita did mention this, we're coming from a point whereby as women we've been battling for the society and the marketplace, so to speak, to look at what is in between our ears and not what we're carrying, not how God created us, you know, in terms of our body adornment. Um, Rita, you can take the next call. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who are we speaking to and where are you calling from? Uh, your, we're talking to Stephen, calling you from uh, um, Tilda. Yes, Stephen. What is your comment this morning? My comment this morning is that uh, women are getting unfair. Okay, go ahead. What I can see is that if they can go for Miss World, they have gone up to an African level. And we have won a, a, a trophy of African beauty. I don't see why, if our children are, are displaying how beautiful they are, in order to see where Abenacho came from, I don't see anything wrong with the minister because Abenacho is now a, a tourist attraction because she has put Uganda to a level that it was not, and everybody now is organizing Uganda top duty. Okay. The thank, only thing thank. is that this so women should complain it. about is why women are undressing themselves, when men in the music world are dressing up. When you look at what is happening in the music industry, the women are going naked when men are dressing up properly. I don't understand the women's complaint when the women are trying to even, you look at the woman you are sitting with in the studio and you look at your head, you have very clean hair or you are decorating yourself on the face to look nice, but her hair is like that of a man. Now, do we have to leave our women behave like men, put their heads so dirty and why don't they complain about that? But then, Stephen, one would say that this is the latest fashion, this is the trend. A lady can actually yeah, cut her hair. Even, even looking at the beauty is the latest fashion. You know, looking at the beauty of our country is the latest fashion. Okay. I don't see a reason why somebody should think that when we look at the beauty of our um, god made decoration on, on our women is an insult on women. Okay, thank you so much, Stephen, for your call. That seems to be an interesting, interesting way of going yeah. with things because we have had two men that have actually come up and mentioned the fact that this is going to a conversation that is tending to immorality. Mm. And we have a man call in and say that uh, we as ladies, we beautify ourselves. But Malayu had actually earlier said this, and I'm going to ask each and every one of you that as ladies, there's more to us than just the face. Yes. There is the brain that each and every single day we come and say something. We might look beautiful, we might take time to look a certain type of way, but we still say things. We have had a lady talk about a number of things. So this actually boils down to something. And even Abenacho, when she did go for the Miss World, she talked and brought to the center stage women that were actually talking about the fact that what was happening in Uganda, the teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So she went there, it was a beauty pageant, that there was also a conversation that brought and necessitated the brain. But we're going to also take in this call before we go <laughs> ahead and have this conversation. Hello, good morning. Hey. Hello. Is that NGV? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, please. Can I talk to, to the people on the show? Yes, you are speaking to the people <laughs> on the show. Who are we speaking to? I'm called Ben. Yes, Ben, where are you calling from? And I'm calling from Entebbe Road. Go ahead, Ben, with your comment. Yes, please. Now, yeah, I thank you very much for the talk you are handling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is very important for our country. Yes. Uh, and uh, my comment here is, uh, ben, could you please be precise? 
Yes, my comment is that okay. what is happening is not bad. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Minister came out and stayed here, our guards and they are beautiful and they, no one on this world should deny that duty is very, very important. And he's not selling the guards. And these guards are not going to be forced into sex like our guards who are going to Arab world, who are going to China, who have raped, coerced into sex and have no way to appeal. Now, the country is bringing the guards forward to be seen. Those who engage them, the men will not be forcing them, will be engaging and talking. They are not for sex, they are engaging them. And the, even if it was for sex, it is not like being sold. They are going to have it in the right context. People will know them, they will talk to them. When I look at you at, on the screen, you all look beautiful. It does not mean looking beautiful means you are selling yourself. But being beautiful is very important. The force between men and women is one of the most powerful forces on the face of the globe. And we seem to have lost it has, you. It has even caused wars. So, if our guns are known and people come to see them here, they bring workshops here, they interact with them as long as they are not forced. Our guns will have where to run if things don't go bad. But when they are in the Middle East, where, you are, where they are being sold, where they are being raped, they act very bad. Here they are being made to be known and they, nothing will happen to them, we should tell them how. We lost that, unfortunately. Thank you so much, Ben, for calling in. But uh, that's a lot, yeah. 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 Where did you start <laughs> from? Um, Stephen and Ben. This is the thing. So, first of all, I think it's important to remember this is a country that has criminalized sex work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's let's just begin from there. That sex work is illegal in Uganda. Right. So when you're saying that, when the last caller was saying, like, we're just going to, if they see their girls and they want to have sex with them, it's fine as long as they don't. So, like, is that the purpose? Is that what the minister is trying to do? To say, listen, we're parading these very beautiful, curvaceous women and do with them as you please as long as they're concerned? Because if that's the case, then we need to have a real conversation about decriminalizing sex work in this country. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Like, my point is, what's the purpose? So what are these stories coming to do? To look at the girls and be like, wow. You're so beautiful. And, you're so beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then what? And then what? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, is this really the best? Is this really all we have to offer as a country? Is that what we're saying? Well, we actually have something to offer. Please take a look at these pictures and the, as the conversation continues to go on. We have a number of tourist attraction sites. Mm -hmm. Have we forgotten the gorillas? Have we forgotten the sippy falls? Have we forgotten all that nature has to offer? Honestly, I think for me, it's it's first of all, it's extremely lazy. It's mm -hmm. a it's extremely lazy idea to think that selling Ugandan girls is the only thing that Ugandans have to offer that Uganda as a country has to offer. I mean, I think it's just extremely lazy. And for tourist minister, I'm really ashamed because there's so much that this country has to offer that you do not have to objectify one specific gender, right? Because, I mean, are there no handsome men in this country? Huh. Right? Are there no, like, buffed men with muscles and things but like we that? Don't we have Mr. Uganda? I, we, we would, do they, are they paraded? The no, way, they're you not. Know, they're not. And I think for me that we need to begin to realize the double standards. And that's the real conversation. Is that there are double standards? Yeah. And that, 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 that affects how women are allowed to navigate the world. And that needs to end. You know, so going to Stephen's call, right. the very first call before we went into um, what came next, mm. what exactly were your thoughts, Mala and Trisha, on this one? We are all beautiful, we all have hairstyles, we are all having makeup on. Were his words? Listen, I think that for me the idea that women dress up for someone else 
in itself is problematic, right? right? Because if you like red lipstick, if I like red lipstick, mm -hmm. it's because I like it. I'm not wearing it so that someone can come to me and say, oh, you look beautiful. That's not the purpose. And I think that we need to remove that idea in our heads, right? That women exist solely so that men can appreciate them. Mm -hmm. That's not why we're here, right? We're here, like, I dress like this because I like to dress like this. You dress like that because that's what you like to look like, right? So for me, the idea, it's really a lot of entitlement to assume that we're dressing up the way we dress up simply because we want men to admire us. Right. No, that's not it. And I think for me that is one that's one of the reasons why that breeds a lot of entitlements, a lot of, you know, th uh, uh, like ideas that are really just untrue, mm. right? So I think that Stephen may need to just reevaluate why he thinks women are existing solely so that he can look at them and just appreciate. You know, we've always been a patriarchal society that uh, looks down upon women. And what women, time and again, of course, in time immemorial, has, women have just been known as beautiful objects that are there to nurture families mm -hmm. and look good for their husband, and it stops at that. Mm -hmm. Now, having this conversation, I think, I don't know and what really you know shocks many is that we have a good number of women who are you know just supporting this are pro this a hundred percent and um, just goes this just goes to say that we really don't know now last year tourism was actually marked as a top foreign exchange earner and uh, we earned about 1.4 billion US dollars this is about 5 trillion Uganda shillings and I don't know what the world is saying about this particular move. Will it, in your view, will it bring down this particular numbers in terms of attracting tourists to our country or it will actually get better? I don't know what the world is saying. What's your view on this? Trisha, before we get into that view, yeah. now we were supposed to have Patrick Mochi with us to join on this conversation this morning. He's coming in. We're just going to take a call. He has been held up. He can't join us, mm -hmm. but we're going to look to him via phone call. Hello, Patrick. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? Uh, Richard. Yes. Uh, this is Richard. Oh, Richard. Richard Makumbi. Yes. Makumbi, good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. What do you have to say in regards to the conversation of women, Kavi women being added to the tourism attraction list? This is, uh, I don't want to be very rude, but it's total rubbish. Okay, why would you say uh, that? A country like Uganda, who are seeking justice, the UN declaration on human rights, especially for women, and also the SDG 5, budget 5.2, which talks about exploitation. When I look at that in the news, I see that exploitation for women and girls in this country. Yes. To remind you, last year alone, Uganda made five billion from poorism. <laughs> but the same country this year in the budget for 2019-2010, they are cutting the health budget and the education budget. <laughs> now imagine all that money we made from poorism, nothing is going to be contributed to Texas, <laughs> where women issues are most. On a daily basis, we lose about 20 women dying because they are giving birth. Right. Then at the same time, you see this exploitation and sexism about women's bodies. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sound rude. When you look at the, the, the pageants, the duty pageants, these duty pageants for women of whatever size have been happening. But as long as you tag them to sexism, as long as you make our women to be the tourist attraction, then that is wrong. Right. Women are human beings who should enjoy their rights as human beings, and we should avoid using them in advertisement. Mm -hmm. I've always been against using women's body for advertisement in this country. But then, Richard. Just to stop here for a second, we did have a caller call in and say that as women we are choosing to put on this makeup, we're choosing to dress a certain type of way. We have had Abe Nacho go for the Miss World, all these beauty pageants, so there's really no difference in what we're now doing in regards to tourism here in Uganda. But, but I understand what you're saying. Let me tell you, beauty pageants I have no problem. But you just remember the message the minister gave. 
that we want to have this deeper presence about women who have calves so that they can attract men who are poor to our country. Is that what we are looking for in a deeper pageant? Mm -hmm. No, we are looking for the brain. Women are so powerful brain-wise. It's not about their curves. It's not about their bodies. We should talk about tourism in a manner. Yesterday I was watching your, your uh, DC live wire, and they interviewed gentlemen in Chivuye. One said, for him, he known tourism, tourists to be attracted to animals, baboons, monkeys. Right. Now, are we saying our women have become animals? Are they animals? No. We should utilize our women in a manner that dignifies them. Do you think that, that makes you, them look human beings? Do you so, think that you actually face consequences of this particular move with regards to tourists streaming in to the country? I don't know if you've monitored what the world is saying with regards to this, but do you think we'll face the consequences of this, whether positive or negative? Hello, Richard. Yes, please. Uh, I didn't monitor very well, but what I can say is uh, I had a question yesterday with my colleague that if we want to promote tourism and we want women to be at the forefront, why don't we have a minister for tourism who is a woman? Mm. Let's have a woman who is a minister for tourism. Mm. The head of a minister is a man. The gentleman who is promoting the women with the calves is a gentleman. Do we have women taking lead? Abenacho came back with all the popularity she got from China at the International uh, Beauty Pageant. And we are failing to utilize her in a manner that dignifies women, in a manner that promotes the living of women and girls. We are not supposed to, to make women look like they are useless in this country. We should do, you know, we've been fighting for women's rights to put women in the boardroom, to make decisions. We should allow women to sit around the table with men, to make it, but not use them as objects. Right. We should avoid, we should avoid taking away the dignity of women. These are the mothers of all What are we teaching our children, our young people? Okay, thank you so yeah. much, Richard. They are violent, yes? Yes? Thank you so much, Richard, for being a part of this conversation. You highlight a number of key things. Now, Richard Makumbi is a women's rights activist, and as you can hear, for those that have been following the conversation, he's saying that there's more to women. Women are powerful brain, are very, very powerful brain-wise. And he raises the thing of, why don't we have a minister of tourism being a woman if we're trying to front the women? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I, I think that the question of women's involvement in politics and how we, what, what the cabinet situation looks like is a whole different conversation, mm -hmm. right? But I think that he does raise an important quest, question of we want women to be quote unquote in charge, right? So you're, you're saying women need to be the face of this tourism thing, but there's no woman at, at the helm of it. The right. man is still making the decisions, mm -hmm. right? Listen, I think that this country needs to refocus its priorities. I think that I'm just, I mean, and, and I think that it's important to stress that continuously we have had ministers and MPs say extremely harmful and violent comments targeted towards women, and there's been zero consequence. Right. And when does that end? I mean, this is a government that has said that it is beyond, it is behind women 110 percent. You know, there's, but in actual sense, when we look at the actual re reactions from the government, from the state, from the president himself none right right so at what point do we stop and say enough is enough these people must face consequences we must we treat women with dignity we acknowledge that we are faulted and someone needs to be held accountable at wow. what point do we get to that right okay. Thank you so much, Tricia, for coming in the studios. I think um, we have tried our best to do justice to that particular conversation. But keep your views coming. The hashtag is morning at NTV across all the social media platforms. Tricia, thank you so much. You. That has been it for Kickstarter segment. Morning at NTV still continues. Up next is David Rukasi with Reality on the Ground. Don't go too far. Watching Morning at NTV.
Connect with the dopest show, hottest entertainment news, and home to great hits. Catch up with your favorite celebrity, exclusive interviews, behind the scenes, 